Erev Tov, Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. There's some very serious news here. Uh, this is actually, this particular article here came out of, uh, a few days ago, maybe actually about a week ago. A brother sent this to me, uh, shared this with me in our email there. We just caught the email, but this is uh, on USA Politics Today. Uh, says that Putin tells army to prepare for World War III with U.S. in Syria. Um, the... It was posted by U.S. Politics Today on December the 4th in 2015. It says Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered Russian military forces to prepare for World War III. After warning Minister uh, of Defense Sergei uh, Soigu to prepare for Syria to become the central battleground between NATO, Western Allied country, countries, and Russia. Uh, he goes on to say, according to the report by the, uh, by the uh, Ministry of Defense, Putin's order was given following assurances from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that Israel would not interfere in a Russian-U.S. war in the Middle East. Of course, since this article has came out, there's been a lot of heightened tensions uh, there in Syria already. Uh, we can certainly see that, that a battle definitely seems to be imminent. Uh, uh, to say the very least there, and uh, the, the rhetoric that is going all over uh, the world from both sides, the United States as well as uh, Russia, is certainly, to say the least, uh, very provocative on both sides there. President uh, Putin has warned uh, the Swedish uh, people not to interfere and to get involved with the NATO war and let them know straight up if they did there would be military consequences. At this point, Sweden is very neutral in regards to any war that could erupt in this part of the world there. Iran is probably the only uh, country that will actually be allied to Russia along with Syria, which Syria is very much in, in a very serious condition as far as their own military power and capabilities at this point. The only thing that I can see that would actually transpire in a war such as this is the prophecy that we mentioned about in Hosea regarding Ephraim in chapter 7 and chapter 8 there last night where God was angry with Ephraim and says that he would go to the east to Syria and would bring him down with bring his birds or bring him down with a net like birds caught in a net which clearly identifies to me that there would be an aerial war fought between the United States and some of their, their NATO allies seemingly giving Russia the upper hand in the battle or maybe at least that the United States takes a severe blow as a result as a punishment that God intends to bring upon the United States in this particular prophecy. But let me look, uh, take you to some other uh, news though as well. I want to show you uh, first John Kerry, something that he has stated there that has really concerned me. I want you to listen to John Kerry's statements here. They're very provocative here that lets you know that the United States is definitely planning for a confrontation with Russia and Iran and makes it quite clear treating them as if they're children. This is not a game you're playing with children, needless to say. And the, in fact, the arrogance could very well be what backfires on the United States in a war with Russia and Iran. Uh, because as I said, it is a prophecy in the book of Hosea, something we'll bring up in just a moment here. Listen to this uh, just for a moment here on RT News that just came out here uh, a little while ago. Ken, the U.S. Secretary of State warned Russia and Iran against continued support for Assad. If Russia and Iran stand as a block and allow Assad to simply stiff the process and we get no transition at all, then it will be clear who the problem children are and our options will be narrowed and we will have to make some tough choices. And political analyst Talib Ibrahim. That's very serious to say the least, and as I said, it is a very provocative statement said there by John Kerry. Uh, it, it is quite clear that if uh, President Putin does not play into the hands that, uh, that the United States is wanting them to, Kerry has quite fl frankly, bluntly put it, that they're going to go to war. That's exactly what he, he is in, implying there. Now, the United States has already warned Russia 
not to arm its uh, it, it, its own uh, bombers with air-to-air -air missiles. And that was actually something that uh, we had there in the article. Let me just pull this back up here. There's another part of the article here where it says, uh, this was actually reported on whatdoesitmean.com. Uh, necessitating the timing of this order, this report continues was President's uh, President Putin's refusal yesterday to obey the Obama regime's warning against the Federation arming of its fighter aircraft operating in Syria. Um, he says uh, with air-to-air -air missiles, which when it's when this Pentagon demand was ignored, the U.S. Um, the U.S. announced it would begin an immediate massive air power exercise involving F-16 fighter jets, E-3 AWACSs, surveillance command jets, KC-135s, refueling tankers, RC-135 intelligence uh, gathering planes, and B-1 and B-52 bombers with them, also refusing to disclose the total number of planes involved. Uh, again, it's being very provocative. And now Syria, Basra al-Assad has accused uh, the United States of attacking uh, its own soldiers and killing civilians and soldiers in, uh, in a town that is, owned, that is ran by the Syrian military there and accused the United States. Now, the United States has flat out uh, denied any, any involvement in this particular uh, aerial attack. Uh, but they have been uh, blamed by, uh, by, by NATO and, uh, excuse me, blamed by Russia as well as the Syrian uh, government in this particular attack there. Uh, let me take you over to Mamre real quick, uh, the, the Hebrew online Bible there. I want to take you over to Hosea. Let's quickly, again, I was trying to actually find this in my own Bible here where I had it marked at here. I do have it right here uh, so that we can get right to this here. Uh, going back to the prophecy that we spoke about yesterday, uh, uh, verse 11, chapter 7, Ephraim also is like a silly dove without a heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria, which is exactly what the United States has done. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. That's because the ministers have actually been warning the, the, the believers in the United States that judgment is coming on the United States. Many of them believe that it is uh, a type of Babylon. And um, uh, I forget exactly what scripture that is. I know it's the 51st chapter. I think it's of Isaiah. And, but I can't say whether or not that is so or not. And we did, another person asked recently too about the idea of Ephraim being the United States. I had done a video just recently regarding that. It was a shock to me as well, but God had revealed to me that yes, in this in light of this in the book of Hosea, Ephraim does apply to the United States here. Uh, it goes on to say though, woe to them. For they have fled from me, destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. And that's pretty sad to say, because yes, many people do believe that the lost tribes of Israel, many of them are in the United States. Now, I do agree that Great Britain does play a hand in this, because you have to remember, our history has been falsified to some degree. And yes, Great Britain and the United States are still legally linked together. So can that actually run hand in hand with them? Absolutely. And some of the tribes are in Europe, to say the least. But the majority of those lost tribes are in America. Many of them are now believers in Yeshua or believers in Jesus. They're Christian people. But the sad thing is that, that, that God redeemed them, and yet they have spoken lies against me. They've even also perverted God's words and perverted the very words of Yeshua. That's the sad part about it there. And they have not cried unto me with their heart when they howled upon their beds. They assembled themselves for corn and, and wine and they rebelled against me, just wanting their money. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do, do they imagine mischief against me. That's the United States getting their turning an evil eye towards Israel there. Because see, when you strike Israel, you're going to strike God's heart right there. You don't play around like that. And even that little brother Nathan there said that the United States, that, that Obama was Gog, and yes, he will bring the nations down against Israel. 
goes on to say, they return, but not to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. Their, their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt there. Not quite sure how that fits into place as far as the land of Egypt, but we'll be looking on that prayerfully. Now, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll drop down. I was going to bring this into memory and I apologize. I wasn't able to do that. I uh, had another thought in my mind there. want to share with you something else that's very important in this quickly. Uh, I had uh, captured this because I did not want to lose this particular part here. Um, and I want you guys to be able to see this here. This was uh, an RT news broadcast that was going on there. I did not actually catch the sound on this one here. I kind of regret I didn't there. But, uh, but anyway, in just a few moments, you're going to see this is where the Turkish uh, government has their soldiers. Now, this here is a Turkish foreign minister, uh, Mevlet, who's actually speaking there, saying that they're not going to add more troops in uh, Iraq at this time. But they're actually up there with the Kurds. Why? They're, they're trying to, to guard that triangle of uh, oil uh, that's being brought out uh, from Syria, smuggled out of Syria and even in Iraq and some places there, and brought back into Turkey there. But see, the, Turk, the Turks are claiming that they have their troops there only to train the Kurds. In reality, they have claimed that they're going to put a permanent base there, and Iraq is an, up in arms over this. But what was interesting, as I really began to examine this, in fact, where I paused the screen there, that's a U.S. soldier right there. His face was, was blacked out. He had a mask on his face there from the front view to where you could not see his face. But it's not not going to be the only case that you're going to see here. You're going to see another one soon. Uh, and, and what's obvious to me in this case here is it's Navy SEALs. Not to mention as you watch on your screen here, not quite yet, but you're going to see in a few moments here all types of American military hardware being involved by the Kurds there, the courtesy of the United States there. Uh, they have all types of Humvees, especially many, many Humvees you're going to see in the video here, the footage here. Uh, they have armored tank personnel carriers, uh, excuse me, armored personnel carriers, uh, courtesy of the United States, and that's actually being operated by the, by the Turkish people there. Uh, they have American tanks that are there. Uh, but what we're, we're about to come to the place here that I want you to be able to see right there. Uh, there, these men run up here. They're going to stop in just a moment. There's one of your Humvees right there on the screen there. Uh, they changed the color of it there. But you're going to see in a few moments, uh, that was one American there working with the Turks and the Kurds there. Uh, and you're going to see in just a moment here, they're going to show an American Navy SEAL operating there with these men there. And I freeze the, the, the video recording for you so you can see it. It's, it's funny that no one else mentions this uh, at all. By the way, many, many Humvees right there. There's about four of them there in a row. Uh, they kind of converted a little bit on there, did some different weldings right here. Now, this is the one. I pause the screen there. You see he's, he's wearing the, the, the way his hat is there. He's in full military gear. Uh, our U.S. military gear. He is not in whatsoever. Was he in any kind of, um, uh, of uh, I paused it again right there for you. He is wearing, the, the guy in the very back near the wall there is very obvious a U.S. Navy SEAL dressed in the camo of the U.S. government. There's no markings on his shirt or anything. Uh, the guy that he's working with or supposedly training, and, and they're actually part of this combat, is the guy with the black shirt on. He is the Arabic guy that he's working with. And you're going to watch in just a second. He's going to push him to get out there. He gets his own American uh, soldier that's there with the gun shooting there. He pulls him back and throws the Arabic guy out there to do the fighting to take the risk of getting the bullet. Now, I'll show you what I mean in just a second so you know. Watch this as this kind of unfolds here. We'll unfreeze this here in just a second, and you can see as he does this, he's going to pull his guy back. See, he pushes that guy out. His man gets back, and he lets the other guy take the heat. Now, to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I wanted to show you, I actually had saved an image of 
Navy SEALs so that you can see for yourself exactly what I mean by the way Navy SEALs uh, do there. You see the, the soft caps, you can see it on several of these guys right here. These are Navy SEALs right here. They're wearing the desert camo right there. They're, they've got the uh, kind of like a Gilligan hat from Gilligan's Island, if you remember that. Another one up here, another one right there. And these are Navy SEALs in and amongst their, uh, their Arabic people that they're training. Uh, some of them, uh, the Navy SEALs also wearing the black jackets, etc. Now, if you go back and you look, I uh, apologize, I actually wrote wrong one. You go back and you look at the video that I was just sharing with you. Let me, let me get the right one up here. See, same thing there. Now notice, here's what I want you to see here though. The man that's doing the shooting, he's another, an American right there. He's got a, he's got a bulletproof vest on, but he's wearing that black shirt and the black cap. All right, let's go back one more time. Notice right here in this one here. You actually have in the back the black shirt, see? You have that, you, you know, the Navy SEALs. They, they, they're just kind of certain things they like to wear anyway. And, and, you know, I'm all for our SEALs. Believe me, I am. But what's funny, though, is how that we claim to the American public one thing and we do another. And it makes no sense, you know? Uh, and we are definitely headed towards a world war there. Now, Russia is definitely outgunned by NATO. There's, there's no doubt about it. We, we posted on Israeli News Live, our Facebook page here. If you look at the firepower of just the United States alone, the United States has triple the air power of what Russia has. There's no doubt about that. But the problem that the United States is facing and NATO, the, uh, the European Union is facing, Russia, though, is not lacking when it comes to nuclear warheads. They're not lacking when it comes to air defense capabilities that is superior to all the NATO members put together. Uh, they do have some edges and they even have some fighters that, that no one can get within 20 miles of. They got some very good capabilities. But are they outgunned? Yes, they are. In many areas, they're outgunned. But Russia, Putin is not going to play games, friends. He will use nuclear weapons and he will use it where it hurts. He talked about in a particular broadcast where he was sitting down with his cabinet ministers. They made it public because they wanted the world to know that Russia will use a, in fact, he spoke about a weapon that they have that has catastrophic consequences, but not quite that of a nuclear warhead, but with intercontinental ballistic capabilities. And they're willing to use that as a deterrent uh, or even use it in order to turn the tide of what the war would be if they were losing. But again, as we look at the scriptural side of it, God says he's going to bring Ephraim down like, like, like throwing a net on birds. That seems to me to indicate a air war, and it's going to happen in Syria. Friends, we're in a very serious hour, and we're about to see biblical prophecy unfold. And like I said, whether or not Russia takes a pretty heavy loss in this as well, I cannot say that they won't, but no doubt NATO will not fare well in this battle. It is a prophecy and God is going to carry out His Word. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And let me just really stress one thing as well. Friends, pray. This is a time. If you don't know Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach is your Savior, I really encourage you, friends. We're in a late hour. We don't have time to play church anymore, friends. You need, and if you've got loved ones that, that don't know him or have not repented for their sins, I encourage you to encourage your family members as well. Know who Yeshua is. Know him personally. Repent of your sins. Remember John came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'll be doing a message very soon about the kingdom of heaven. As Jesus said, it's nigh you even in you. It's a lot deeper than what most people think. God bless you. I'm Stephen Benin. You've been watching.